I am John Bond. Uh, I'm an illustrator, author and artist. I live and work here in Worthing on the south coast. This is my studio and today I'm going to show you how to draw a cat. Typically known for drawing dogs but today I'm going to draw a cat. When I'm uh, drawing cats or dogs or whatever in the studio I tend to use my uh, Wacom Cintiq with, along with Photoshop. If I'm out and about, I will. I do have an iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, which is really nice as a kind of digital sketchbook. But yeah, based in the studio, this is basically my kind of main setup here. A lot of the work that I've been doing recently has been um, kind of drawing characters over the top of photographs. So I've got a photo here that I'm going to use, which will be nice and topical for the Halloween season. I'm just going to brighten the image up a little and then create another layer over the top where I will kind of just do a bit of a preliminary sketch, more just to kind of get a rough composition. I have a load of brushes in the library here. So for sketching out, I'll just use kind of like a, a mock HB pencil one and then sort of zoom in, get a, a light color so it shows up. And then I'll just kind of very quickly rough out the main character in the middle and then it's kind of trying to add in some other little characters in the scene that just add a little bit of interest and humor to it so maybe a little cat just down here and then over here wouldn't be a picture of mine if it didn't have a dog in it sat here possibly with a, a nice little witch's hat or something on as far as a rough stage goes i'm kind of happy enough with that as a very very base guide I will now just knock the opacity down, just so it's sort of sitting there as a bit of a ghost layer. So I'll create another layer on top of that, and then go straight into painting in the fills with color. Sort of outline the main shape, and then use the paint bucket, fill that in, go around and just tidy that up a little. So there's the main black cat in the middle. I'll keep that on one layer. I'll do this little cat at the side here on another. A lot of my creatures are based on a very kind of simple blocky uh, shape. Can still get a lot of character into something with very minimal kind of marks. For me, one of the most sort of exciting bits of creating characters is adding the eyes, because that's where the soul of the character comes from. And quite often that I can spend a lot of time playing around with the scale of the eye and just the position of it. So do the white to start with. Pupils naturally move on their own, so if you do it on a separate layer, you can kind of, you can see there, just move it around, group the two together and move the eye around. And this is where I mean, you can really sort of change a character's personality. The position of where their eyes are makes a hell of a difference. A lot of my characters have a slightly kind of sad feel to them. They're sort of a bit engaging, you feel sorry for them. Um, and I think the big stereo eyes are quite a, a draw. So we'll do some eyes on this one. If I draw like the left eye, I won't typically sort of duplicate that and drag it across because it just, something about eyes that there, no one's eyes are ever kind of like perfectly symmetrical. And if you do that on a piece, I think the human eye can kind of detect when something's been duplicated. Do his pupils as well. That's one there. I'll just finish the dog as well now. I need to just give the dog a bit of a nose. Which again, just a very simple shape sticking out. And doing that on a separate layer, you can kind of play around with. You can just see the sort of like position of the nose can make him look quite sort of uppity. Quite a nice, nice looking character. What I will do is create a mask layer over the big cat, knock the opacity down a little, and then basically on the mask layer, we're just not actually erasing the kind of artwork underneath, it's just painting on a mask layer. And it's a good thing to try and get into the sort of practice of non-destructive editing. I could just disable the mask again and all of my artwork underneath is still there. Activate the mask and it's back on. And then just bring the opacity of that layer straight back up. 
So now we can see he's kind of sat behind all of those pumpkins nicely. So we'll just do the same with a bit of a mask on this little cat here. Put the opacity back up. And then I think possibly a couple of little claws like that. Make it look like he's been scratching it slightly. Okay, so we've got the three characters on different layers there. Now what I will do is bring in um, maybe a couple of photographic textures that kind of brings the whole sort of image together. So bring it in over the top. Even though it's very subtle, it kind of adds just a little bit more atmosphere and texture and uh, painterly quality to some of it and takes the edge off of that sort of flat photograph. So yeah, we'll save that file. And there we go. So that is um, basically how I draw a couple of festive halloween -y cats with an added dog. No surprises. Um, hope that's been kind of helpful so seeing sort of my process. Um, you can find more of my work on, over on Instagram. My handle is at IamJohnBond uh, and you can link out to my website and everything else from there.